I'm John Peake. I'm the video producer at Constance Free Church in Andover, Minnesota. And Andover is just a suburb of Minneapolis. So I went to school for broadcast journalism, and it just really was hammered into me that you can kind of know what the story is going to be tell, that you want to tell, but you don't know people's perspective unless until you hear it. I went to Lake Charles, Louisiana, after all of their weather events and everything that happened. Um, and the two full-time missionaries that are there came from Constance Free Church, the church that I'm from. In the past two to three years, they've had two hurricanes, a freeze, a flood, and a tornado that has all hit within Lake Charles proper. So they've had a lot of ongoing um, just weather things that, you know, it's really easy to bounce back from one thing per se, but when you have thing after a thing after thing after thing, you get really bogged down and you can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. I knew weather events in Lake Charles. One of the questions I asked was, tell me how it felt driving home after the first hurricane. What was going through your mind? What was going through your heart? What was the first thing that you saw? And even though that, that none of that made it into the video, none of that made that into the final edit, that really gave me an emotional awareness of where they're going to be coming from, as well as be able to ask follow-up questions from their perspective compared to coming in from a, this is all I want to be talking about. This is the only thing I'm going to be talking about. Anything that you say beyond that, I'm not even going to pay attention to. So it was a pretty short, um, maybe month, month and a half in between when I was told this is where I'm going to this is what I'm doing. Um, and then being there. And then, I mean, from a pre-production side, I didn't know what I wanted to shoot. I didn't know what kind of story I wanted to get. I didn't know most of anything. I didn't know where we were going to be. There was no location scouting. There was no kind of, let's take some Polaroids and send it back and let's see what light looks like at a different time. It was, you're here for four days and this is what you're going to get. And try to get as much content and different angles of storytelling as possible so we can get you um, the best case scenario of having multiple videos derived from all the footage that you have. The heat is definitely an issue when you're shooting video gear outside. Um, so the gear that I brought, I brought one Sony a7 III with a tilt -a cage and a shotgun. Um, I brought my DJI Mini 2, and those are really the only two filmmaking pieces of equipment that I brought. Um, I don't like checking any kind of gear at the airport, especially stuff that may or may not make it to the destination that are imperative for me to be using while I'm at said destination. But I mean, just the heat, just the heat would be the, because when you're bringing a mirrorless camera or a DSLR, there's no fan to continuously cool that down. So you're sitting out there in 90, 100 degree weather with high humidity, hoping that, you know, the camera just doesn't turn off in the middle of an interview. Some particularly difficult drone shots um, that I did for the this video, um, two of which you can see them going through the ladder rack of a pickup. And the most difficult one was going backwards through the ladder rack of a pickup. And it's the last shot in the video. And it is a medium close up on a house going backwards. And I speed ramped it. So when it was going through the ladder rack, it was going a little quicker. And I had to do that because you could see my little red hat ducking out of the frame because I was making sure that I wasn't just flying right into the ladder rack of the pickup or worse yet the pickup itself and putting a dent or anything in that so i was inspired by you watch like hgtv or any kind of home improvement network and you see any kind of transitional shot they have a really big sky and like they're showing the neighborhoods and everything like that and i'm like i want to be able to do that but i also want to show the like the house in a close-up. The biggest thing, and this is what I've been saying for the past five plus years, is everything I make, everything that I do from live production to pre-production to 
post production to uh, you know seeing the video on the screen to directing a live broadcast is how is the content that I'm creating? How is that helping people get closer to Jesus? How is that building their relationship? How is that facilitating a relationship? So just knowing that a piece of content that I've created is just being exposed to so many people and just showing how awesome God is to so many people is just really enlightening to me, if you will. I never. I'm from a super small town in Iowa. So even traveling to the Twin Cities was a kind of an aspiration. Like, I can't wait to get out of the small town. There's more hogs in my county than there are in my hometown. So the um, just being able to use my God-given gifts to tell people's story and God's faithfulness in their lives is already my dream job. And to be able to share my work with so many people in Atlanta and all over the world has just been bigger than I could have ever imagined. So I remember sitting down and waiting and I'm like, all right, if I win, it's going to be awesome, but there's more qualified people than me. And so after each one and realizing that I didn't win, I'm like, kind of like, yeah, I get it. I really hoped I'd been, but I didn't win. And then when it came to the best overall video, and I was I was literally waiting with my eyes closed, going like, Dear Lord, if this is your will for me to win, thank you, um, all for your glory. And then when my name was called, I could feel my like emotions start to be like, like you're waving your face. Like I said, I'm from a super small town in Iowa. Like, from a frame of reference, the closest McDonald's was 60 miles, six zero miles away. The closest Target, an hour away. So it's to be recognized on a stage in Atlanta when I was one of 40 people in a school that consolidated and had six towns part of that school. I'm like, this is... This is surreal. So to be able to just see what, how God had worked in my life to open all these doors for me to be able to tell this story and then for my name to be called and to be just recognized, I was nearly crying from the stage. And I remember walking back to my car and calling my wife and crying because it was just, it was, it was surreal. Every project I do and every content piece that I create, I want to change the way people think, feel, or behave. And I mean, what better way to do that than to teach people about Jesus?